Hello and welcome to <laughs> Gag of the, the Millennial. A show where we talk about pop culture. <laughs> oh, she's at current events and we spill the hot spooky Darjeeling right into right. your spooky skeletal lap. Good luck, everybody. <laughs> I don't know what happened. There. That was sorry. Do you know what? Normally I, I don't know what happened. Normally I'm like, let's read let's the read intro, but one. actually I'm going to keep that. Yeah, okay. no, I'm going to keep right, that. Well, yeah, no, we're going to keep it. A very spooky oh. woman has descended to the Citadel um, today. <laughs> I mean, is there anything more Halloween than just messing up? So, <laughs> <laughs> so Luxaria had just came back from murdering her dog. I, oh, little biscuitina. Oh, little biscuitina. Yeah. I Donkey wonky. I helped him commit arson. <laughs> <laughs> arson, but you got blood, right? Yeah. Sure. Oh, well, yeah. What kind of weird arson are you doing? Oh, pop goes the pig. <laughs> Today, we are going to go into housemate stories, weird spooky encounters in a house, like anything revolving like someone's premises and maybe some like naughty neighbours. And she died. And she died yes. doing what she loved, ploughing. Dying. Um, as I always say, though, if you are listening to this, watch this wherever you are, make sure okay. to hit the like button, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And if you listen to us on the audio version only, make sure you give us a five star rating or a thumbs up, whatever it is on the platform you're listening to. Give us a nice review about how delicious we are to mm-hmm. listen to. Our voices are so soothing. We raise the dead. That's nice. Yeah. Could do with more friends. We could- <laughs> <laughs> so this first story is called Sleepwalking Roommate. Oh! We need a spooky sound. Yeah, we know. Yeah, I should have haunted wolf. I'll put put, like a haunted noise here. Oh! Oh, the magic of editing. I recently acquired a new roommate. The entire (laughs) situation. I picked it up from Primark. Yeah, 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 target one. I recently acquired a new roommate. The entire situation should never have happened. That's the end of the story. So this should never have happened, but I needed someone to help with the rent. So a Craigslist post, a Craigslist posting later, oh God, he moved Craigslist. in. I mean, is Craigslist a good place to get housemates? I don't think Craigslist is a good place to get <laughs> anything except if you want death. <laughs> so we've got the husband of Craigslist. His name was Greg, uh, and he disclosed to me that he did sometimes have strange sleeping behaviors. Oh, no. Some, some no time sleep for that. talking, sleepwalking, and even night terrors. Funny thing was, I also had a history of sleepwalking, but only on rare occasions. So in that case, I was like, coming, Gail. Oh, so they went for a nice walk in the park yeah, they did, together. Yeah, had both no asleep. Memory, yeah. The first incident occurred about one week, uh, one week after he moved in. I heard him screaming in the middle of the night. Right. Since we both slept in different rooms on different sides of the houses Mm. the screams sounded distant (laughs) thank you wonderful but enough to scare me so much so that i ran to check on him as i got closer to his bedroom he stopped screaming so i went back to bed oh how haunting time for bed like would you be like oh i heard it's good oh it stopped it's fine for the next month we had no issues i noticed he had no friends or family that would visit and never saw or heard him on the phone or texting i mean if it's been a month like, are you really gonna have that many people? It's, it's only been a month. I'd understand yeah. if it's been like maybe jumping. I mean, gun. you I would see you would expect to see someone on their phone talking to someone. I guess, though, yeah. You? Then another random night, Greg started screaming again. Same thing. I got up and started going to his bedroom, but he'd stop. Then one night, I was awoken by screaming in my bedroom. <gasps> I couldn't see anything in the panic, so I turned on the bedroom lamp and he was standing at the foot of my bed wearing some sleeping clothes. It, this scared me, so I started screaming and woke him up. He apologised and went back to bed. Now that is creepy. If you suddenly be oh, asleep and there's someone standing at the end intrusion. of your bed. Yeah. Oh my gosh. About two nights later, I awoke to clanking clanking sounds like sound like tools and hammers tapping i turned on the light to see greg kneeling down in the corner working on something with his hands a few seconds after her turning the lights on greg froze then slowly stood up turned around and blankly stared at me whilst i laid in bed I was beyond creeped out, so I slowly slid out of my bed, left the house after sleeping in my truck down the road. I returned to the house at eight in the morning. Greg was gone. All of his belongings were gone. No signs of him anywhere. It was like he never lived there. I didn't know any uh, any of his friends or family, so I had no one to call about him. Days turned into weeks. Weeks turned into months. I moved out after the lease was up. I was moving furniture out of my bedroom, and in the corner of my room where Greg was kneeling down the last time I saw him, I realized the floor vent of the air conditioning was loose. 
Inside the floor vent was an envelope with tons of pictures of me sleeping. Oh. The pictures had handwritten dates and times written on the back of the pictures. The only other item was a whittled down wooden broom handle brought to a point. I truly believe that Greg was preparing to kill me that night. It appears Greg had been coming into my room almost nightly and working on making the bed the, the bedroom handle a sta- the broom handle, sorry, a stabbing weapon. That's oh, absolutely horrific. Sorry, I kind of yeah, I kind of no. messed up the end then. My no, brain no, was no, going no, a bit no, weird. Right. The the idea of like you have a new person that you found on Craigslist to begin with and he has night terrors and screaming. One morning you just wake up, well middle of the night and wake mm. up and he's at the end of your bed. And then you leave the that, house. That is enough to be like, nah, no, locked on the door. But yes. like he disappears when you come back and he's never seen again. Mm, like what? That just says that like nefarious activities were likely happening. Yeah, like why would he just suddenly like disappear? <laughs> I do find it weird that they've used the word roommate as well. Because when they, when people say roommates, I always think literally sharing a room. Yeah, that's which true. Which is yeah. a concept in the UK that I'm like, imagine imagine you're living here being like, I just need a roommate. Yeah, maybe. Just come and live in my bed with me. Yeah, <laughs> like, that's just very I mean, with behavior. London prices. I know, right, yeah. <laughs> Awful. It's either live in a broom closet or sleep with or get 10 whittled people. by a broom. <laughs> Very that. God, but the idea of like waking up and having something at the end of your bed, like luckily I've never really been experienced with anyone who like properly sleepwalks. I remember my brother sleepwalk as a child, but because it was a child and I was also a child, it was never really it's scary. Not a thing, yeah. yeah. Um, and he never did anything like weird. It was kind of just like he would maybe walk into the kitchen and then walk I've back sl- out. I've, I've had a sleepwalking incident. I that know we've you have. Yes. Before. Oh, titties out, yeah, titties girl. Out. Very that. Um, I do find it weird though. That like so I don't know. I've got a couple of questions okay. about this story. When um, well, um, maybe we're a bit of a different species in this question. But when was the last time you printed out pictures you took? Oh God! <laughs> like maybe twelve years ago. Yeah. So if this is recent or old, um, I think this depends on like. When it's I didn't posted. actually look when yeah. it was posted. Hang on. When it first six asked, years ago. Six years ago. Okay, maybe that is more common back then. For someone to be like, I've printed out photos of you asleep and I've written the dates on them, mm. but they also don't have a phone, which means they must have been using a camera. Which could is they like, have been a Polaroid, spooky. maybe, or like oh, something? Perhaps. And maybe that's maybe he they didn't. But you would hear it. a Polaroid going off in your room, even if you were asleep. Yeah, I guess because they flash and go. But maybe, but maybe it's just one of those little because you have. <laughs> She's Welcome dead. to Polaroid noises yeah, with Luxaria. Um, no, but like it's one of the smaller ones because those small ones aren't as loud as like the big ones. Like because I've got quite a large yeah, one. That's true. Maybe the small ones don't make I as have much like a of Fuji a noise. Film big block one that does yeah. make a bit of noise. If this person was sleepwalking or was printing photos or whatever, like, and they were doing it a bit weird, I think it's strange to try to maybe dissect why he was printing out photos because if he was just a little bit crazy. Yeah, I guess so. But then also, like, I don't know. Lots of things come into question there because, like, why would you if you were going to whittle a weapon? Why would you do it near the victim? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> You'd be like, it's quietly in the garden. And I'm but maybe, on maybe this all this statue. happened. Maybe all of this was just under sleepwalking. Yeah, quite like, possibly. And if, so, if you sleepwalk, there's no sense to be made out of it because the brain isn't there. So maybe he wasn't even going to kill her consciously. Maybe it was like a thing in, the, in, in as a sleepwalker. Maybe mm. it had happened to always happen in the subconscious. And this, I don't know. But, you know, it's hard to tell. It is, but it's isn't it? Spooky. It is very spooky. I don't like the idea of house invaders. I think they're actually... That's probably one of the worst, like, things to happen in my life, I think. I've never actually had, like, a house invader situation, but sometimes I, like, wake up at night, late at night, and if there's a hoodie on my door or something, I'm like, oh, no, someone's in the room, I'm going to die. Where I sleep in my bedroom, if I have the door open a little bit so that Biscuit can come in and out and, like, go and have water and biscuits. Biscuit's her dog, by the way, if you don't know. Yes. Sometimes I can see my jackets by the door on, like, the little hooks, and if I wake up, like, half asleep, I am like, there's someone over there! No, that's true. Because my clothing yeah. is black, so it literally yeah. against the white walls. It literally looks like a figure in the Satan's here, girl. ready for your pussy girl. Very that. So I do under and I, that. I mean, and the thing is, as soon as you wake up in a panic, you're like awake. Then it's <laughs> no, that I way. agree. Seven hours later, you might sleep. I agree. I think sometimes it's the same thing as sometimes you th- see things out the corner of your eye. Oh yeah, and it's like actually not actually there, but it's like weird. It's a hallucination. A hallucination. Yes. Yeah. So some- sometimes humans just hallucinate, but I think. That situation, I mean, what what can we take from this story? Don't, don't Craigslist. use Craigslist for housemates. Just don't like, use Craigslist. Jesus, no. I actually think it's probably beneficial for her to have not found the photos until she left. Because if she found them, like, the day after, oh. she would have been living there in fear that this person's going to come back and try to, like take her yeah but that's she true. didn't find it until she was leaving at least that kind of saved her from some of the stress of 
the worrying the, yeah, the whole the, time. Yeah, the, the anxiety. Yeah. No, what a weird spooky story. Mm. I don't like it. Don't no. like it. Because Stop. you know humans are the scariest thing of all. They are, really. Mm. So my story comes from a Reddit question that was like, have you ever lived in a haunted house or had paranormal experiences with people in a house? Oh. oh. Are you ready? This is by Economy Cactus. Economy Cactus. Yeah. When I was younger, I used to take naps upstairs. By the time I was eight, I absolutely refused to go upstairs. The upstairs had two large closets or perhaps attics um, what they called attic like stairways they ran from one side of the stairs all the way to the other on both sides how big is this (laughs) (laughs) wealthy woman it was America even just a normal house like eight stories tall oh this is going to be my favourite sentence it was essentially a crawl space that was maybe 30 feet long no stop stop, why why, why do people have crawl spaces awful idea I just think of like body like body hiding yeah it's very like there was a dead body Mm. and it wasn't found for 80 years no it was eaten by a pumpkin Mm. It started one day when a friend and I went crawling from one side of the other with flashlights like kids normally do in crawl spaces. No, no. we're not doing any of all that. And I saw a girl there, sitting there, in the corner, acting like she wanted to play with us. It's mm. very, come play with us, Johnny! Is it, who is that? I don't Shining. Know. I know a lot of people say when they see a ghost, they aren't scared, just interested. No, I was terrified. This girl looked normal, had blonde hair, a nice dress, and seemed friendly, but I stayed silent. I kept crawling behind my friend and got out of the closet. I told him what I saw, and he didn't, s- apparently he didn't see it, but felt like he didn't want to go back in. Oh, dear. Then my parents would occasionally send me upstairs to get something and I would be up there and the doors would swing open. <gasps> As if they were trying to get me to come inside. Oh dear. Oh dear. Death now. I would lose toys and wouldn't be able to find them anywhere and suddenly my parents would be fishing out Christmas presents out of the attic and then we would find some of my toys. Oh dear. I remember being eight years old and my parents are still asleep in the morning. I leashed my dog to take on the monster in the attic. My dog, usually up for anything, refused to go to the top shelf in the attic. Top oh, step God. in the attic. My parents never believed me with all the weird things that happened in that house. I would get blamed for things that happened. Leaving lights on, toys everywhere, taking toys, things I didn't even know happened. Anyway, we move out of there when I am 10. Not a week passes before the new owners call us up and ask if the house is haunted. Oh, she haunted. Amityville haunting. Their daughter sleeps upstairs. She says at night she's been playing with a blonde haired girl. (gasps) You. This is your story, isn't it? It's you. (laughs) No, yes. My parents laughed at how crazy these homeowners must be. (laughs) Silly ladies. To make this already long story a bit shorter, the girls started appearing in other parts of the house with them. They would look over while watching the TV and see the girls sitting on the daughter's lap, etc. They looked up at the computer they looked up on the computer, the past owners of the house, and they found an old dressmaker lived there and the liter- and the little girl was wearing one of the ladies' dresses. The family that moved in there were absolutely torn apart by these events, got divorced and moved out of that house. Jesus, I bet like I bet it's one of those situations where like the wife's like Something happened and the husband's like, no, you crazy bitch. Oh, I can't. 100%. It's, it's like every horror movie block. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very, very that. I think when it comes to like spooky big houses anyway, mm-hmm. like if you've ever, you, I mean, you grew up in like a more sort of like villagey vibe. Yeah. Big houses make noises. Yeah. And like when it's quiet, like they creak and they move. If it's because like, like old houses made of wood and stuff as well. Like mm-hmm. if it's like brick and like steel, mm-hmm. like it's, it, they do sometimes like more, that's more like pipe noises of like yeah. the metal. But like actual houses that are built of like, wood and old and stuff like it does just creak with heat when people say like the house is like water. settling and stuff like mm-hmm. it's an actual thing that happens mm-hmm. I do want to like believe children when they say I saw someone in the garden girls but I also kind of feel like children are very imaginative uh, not to discredit children because like they clearly he clearly like left the attic feeling like he'd seen something and I've said this before I'm like if you have a paranormal experience, even if it's not necessarily real and you've hallucinated the whole thing, you've still come away with like the feeling that yes, it's literal yes, or yes. that it's happened. So yeah. I can, when someone says like, I'm actually genuinely frightened of that area because of this, I'm like, yes, you can be because like you've had a physical reaction to something. Yes. I'm still a little bit, not scared of the dark as such. I'm scared of like being stolen in the night or something like I'm My, scared of people in the dark. What's funny is I've never actually lived in a house where it gets pitch black. So I actually oh, yeah. don't like the dark. Yeah. Because when I lived in Devon, I had a street lamp right outside my oh, window right. at night time. Mm-hmm. So it would just blaze yeah. in. Like not too much that like it was annoying, but enough no. that I could see. In London, it never gets dark yeah. here. Like especially because we live relatively like in a busy area. Mm-hmm. So like 
there's always, always lights light. everywhere. Always so light. now, if I ever go somewhere that doesn't have any, it actually freaks me out. Because we live in London, I forget actually how dark night is. Yeah. Like whenever I'm in a place where I'm like, oh, I'm driving outside of London and it's dark, I'm like, oh, my, like it's. At, you can't actually see yeah, anything. Yeah, pitch black, horrible. Like, that's terrifying. Uh, yeah, I don't I like so darkness. funny because I'm like, oh, this is what other people live with all the time. Yeah. And I'm just like, look at me with my lights in my eyes. <laughs> Silly. But no, I, I like that story. I, I don't know, you know. A haunted house. Something's Would happened. Would you stay in a haunted woman? Oh, I would love to. I've been, I, would. I said for a couple of years, I would love to do like a little trip with like me, you and Callum. Get, and, like, get a group, group, group of people together. together. And to stay in like some kind of like... Spooky. spooky house whether it's like an old house or just one that's made you know that's been this is a haunted house or something yeah I'd love mm-hmm. to do it I think it'd be really mm-hmm. fun I would also love to do it I like the idea of like being scared and I do get like jumpy and spooked but I'm like I'm not a believer in like the paranormal experiences but I am as I said earlier a believer in like if you come away feeling like you've experienced something then like those feelings are still real mm-hmm. regardless because like sometimes humans just do glitch like I just hallucinate sometimes just for fun yeah <laughs> the thing is there is something <laughs> quite um spooky cozy like sort of spooky cozy nostalgic about being in like an older house with like a fireplace yeah and that's all that's kind of like lighting the room yeah and you sit around on the sofa whatever you are with a blanquage and you're like either watching something spooky Mm. or you're like telling scary stories there's something so I don't know. It's we, very atmospheric, yeah. isn't it? Because imagine if we were like, I don't know, down at reception and we were like, oh, a Victorian <laughs> girl. Like, it just doesn't make any sense. No, it wouldn't. We were like, in this like brand new complex, just like, and a haunted Victorian a haunted, child yeah, exactly. is just around the post box. Exactly. Like, so I do, I do love the idea. But I think, because I think, we grew up on a lot of like, are you afraid of the dark? That's and like true. Goosebumps and all these mm. kind of shows that were very like that Mm -hmm. and I have a I think I don't know if newer generations of younger people kind of get the same feeling in those environments the true well yeah because we that was like a lot of them were like old stories as well yes, in those yeah. social shows. I mean, I guess the newer generation is brought up with like spooky ghost investigations on like social media and stuff, yeah. aren't they? which is, I guess it's still like graveyardy based. And graveyards do, like at night, graveyards still do give me the creeps, mm-hmm. but not because of like the graves. I'm like, there's someone in here that might pull a knife on me. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, we went to, when we went to um, Highgate Cemetery, mm. like that was oh, uh, typical. It was like pouring down oh, with it was rain. It was sopping, like, it was a it? worst day. But like that was an enjoyable experience Mm -hmm. but it also it did have an element of like spook especially when we went downstairs in that mausoleum area where like Mm. it was like towers either side of us and it was like a walkthrough that was quite creepy part of it is that these families or whoever is buried down there were so wealthy that even in like death they could be like i have my body occupies space oh the, the, like, <laughs> like that, some, money <laughs> some <laughs> some of the mausoleums that were there were almost the size of our apartment yeah like they were like- so Big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous, really, to think about it. That adds to the, like, oh, no, like, 200 years ago, they bought this plot of land and died in it. Well, that, like- do you know, do you know, honestly, that's what I genuinely find probably the most terrifying about the whole thing is when you read the gravestones and they're like, was born in 1755 and mm. died. And, like, they made this grave for this person, like, 200 years yeah. ago. And it's still here. Mm-hmm. And they've got this, and it will stay here for until, like, the world ends or whatever. Yeah. Like... There's Until something it gets ab- demolished for some reason. Yeah, there's something about that that gives me such like an overwhelming feeling of dread of yeah. like, oh, we're so insignificant. Yeah, I think that's what it is. I think it's realization that like your time here on this planet is like very small, mm-hmm. really, very finite. And it kind of puts other things into perspective when you're like, oh my God, why am I paying council tax? <laughs> yeah, because like, you're like, I'm not going to be here in a hundred years. Exactly. What I find freaks me out is that in a hundred years, there will be eight billion brand new people on the planet. Apart from a couple of stragglers. A stragglers. That are over 100. A couple of straggots. A couple of stragglers. Yeah. <laughs> and, and us, because we're vampires. Yeah, yeah. well, that would be nice. Paleo, paleo. Paleo. <laughs> so this is called... A woman. Housemate actually is a violent psychopath. I mean, I feel like that's the theme of today. <laughs> <laughs> so about six years ago, me and my boyfriend lived in a shared house in the UK. Oh, it was a three-story... <laughs> It was a three story ish high. <laughs> we were on the top floor in a double room with a sofa in in the room and ensuite. God, they must have had a budget of eight I know, grand a yeah, month. Jesus. And we also had a small area with a kettle, fridge, and microwave so we could prepare snacks and small meals up there. And 
a jubil oh ju- a ju- what are they called balconies ju- ju- Juliet balcony. Juliet a Juliet balcony <laughs> in other words just a window with a bar uh, yeah <laughs> literally <laughs> not a balcony no just have a window sis yeah a Juliet balcony that overlooked the garden the middle floor had one large and one medium room and and a bathroom downstairs was a large bedroom and a toilet and the communal kitchen with a washer and dryer. A small patio garden. Generally, people that lived there were younger professional people, mm-hmm. say between the ages 20 to 30. Very HMO. But yeah. Usually couples in large, uh, usually couples had the large rooms. Everyone there was friendly and laid back. Mm-hmm. Some issues with it being a bit dirty, but that's all I can really I feel say. Like that's everyone's that's story, everyone. isn't it? The landlady initially used a letting agent to, uh, to advertise and manage the property. Mm-hmm. But then they said they would start charging her the fee as opposed to the tenants she was stingy so decided to advertise it herself of course i ass- <laughs> i <laughs> oh gosh it was on Craigslist. Oh, for God's sake. Here we go, oh, girls. Craigslist. I just... On, in the UK. We or even Craig, worse. We do have yeah. Craigslist here. I remember years ago when, like, Craigslist stories were coming out. I remember I looked myself on it of, like, the dating ones. There oh, so many, like, weird They're banned dating. here now. Are they, yeah, is we can't band? have the personals here because, <laughs> because this. <laughs> was a bit. So when the smaller room on the middle floor became available, it was the first one she rented out without doing the proper background checks. Of the course. first dude she got was a laid-back, quiet Jamaican guy he was the, he was only there for about a month and skipped out without paying the rent oh god the second man she got you get what you pay for mm-hmm. like if you're not going to pay for someone else to manage the services absolutely you, like you have to take on so much more risk yourself the second man she got to rent the room was in his 50s bald short and fat and his name was al the landlady let us know he was be he would be moving in via an email as she did with any other tenants i would okay. want to see them before like if someone yeah I don't, um, I don't know i'd, I'd at least want to meet them before knowing that they were moving in yeah so he moved in in one day when i was at work i got home around about seven and he was standing in the kitchen with all the lights off bear in mind this was england oh, in the winter sake. and it was all Already dark. I almost shat myself when I walked in, <laughs> and he just stood there. I introduced myself and got uh, get on, got an uh, odd vibe off of him. Mm-hmm. His voice was completely monotone and did not and he did not blink once in the two minute interaction. I kid you not. It was it unnerved me so much that I had to uh, I had a microwave meal in my bedroom instead of standing in the kitchen with him there. Oh. The next morning, about five thirty a.m., me and my boyfriend was asleep in bed, as were all of the other ten. Mm. And we heard a blood curdling scream, followed God. by effing C U N T, you effing bastoage. Oh. You've a bastoage. The effing bastoages have stolen my sock. Ooh, oh, what's sake. that? Then the sound of him stomping up and down the stairs and a massive bang and crash come from the kitchen. The banging and incoherent shouting and ranting continued for about 10 minutes. Then he returned to his bedroom and the door clicked with the lock. When it was time for all of us to get up, all the other housemates, two other couples, were creeping around quietly and we discovered that he had smashed the door off of the kitchen cupboard. Oh, for God's sake. We called the landlady and told her what happened and she said that she would sort it out and send a maintenance guy over over to see the damage. Now, how about you maybe evict the person who's mm, smashing yeah. the house up and screaming in the middle of the night? The dude didn't come out of his bedroom for another full day, four days apart to use, apart from to use the bathroom. The landlady then rescinded her last email saying that he had nowhere else to go. So maybe, she, oh, is that, I think a bit of the story is missing. So maybe she did ask him to leave. Yeah, maybe. The, 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 there wasn't, didn't say that. Oh, so she rescinded it saying he had nowhere else to go. Yeah, maybe she did. They've not said that here. So he will, for now, he will be staying. Over the next few months, Al was so creepy. He would corn you and always make really weird, creepy remarks in the kitchen, make jokes, and always would over-reveal things to you about him. Ran would talk about his foot fetish and how he'd never had a proper girlfriend to sexually explore it with. Why would you tell people that? Oh, no! Men, men are sometimes just like that, though, aren't they? They're just like... Uh. You would al- also hear him creeping around constantly. He would sneak up and down the stairs to the top floor, stand outside the door, and then creep back down. If the girl from the room on the floor said that he would ma- loudly masturbate in the downstairs toilet next to her room and then would leave jizz in the sink oh my god oh no thank you then came the day in april when it was a nice sunny day me and my boyfriend had 
both got the day off and we were watching TV with the balcony doors open. The neighbors were a Polish family and were doing some DIY on their house. This went on for about 30 minutes and we could hear Al suddenly start shouting downstairs out of his bedroom window. Shut up, shut up. I'm trying to sleep. I hate you. And other general rambling. I hate you. <laughs> we decided then to lock our bedroom door, which to be honest, I think I probably yeah, would do the same like, thing if yeah, he's done it. Yeah, 100%. Next thing you know, he was in the garden with one of my huge kitchen knives trying to hack through the fence screaming you Polish C-U-N-T I'm going to slit your throats and make your kids watch I'm going to oh my god that would be immediate place that's immediate yeah place. that's that's and there's lots of graphic things that he's shouting I've mm. just decided not to share yeah. um, I called the police instantly the boyfriend recorded him with his phone after two minutes of, of this he threw the knife on the floor and stomped into the house and locked himself in his room the police arrived about five minutes later and the man from the couple's downstairs room let him in they went out to his room arrested him and he started screaming and ranting, ranting about how it was a conspiracy for God's sake they always oh, do this it's, it's, it's stupid no, no, it's, this is the consequence. This is the of consequence. Your yeah, it's not conspiracy. <laughs> he was remanded in custody for eight months. Uh, oh my God! Went to court, and it just says that he got evicted and was in prison. You can do background checks, and you can try to try to manage who goes into your house, whatever. But like, you truly don't know people. You can only do a background check, and it can only come back with something if they've ever been charged with yes. something. And if they've never been charged or never been arrested, it's not going to come back on absolutely. a background check. And like, unless you know past friends or something, it's going to be very difficult to like see who mm-hmm, this person is. Mm-hmm, but also mm-hmm. like, if you message one of their friends, the friend could then message the person and be like, this person's creeping about you. Yep, so like, there's exactly. no easy, r- but like some background checks at least try, but you never really know someone. They don't sound very mentally well. Either. No. They sound like they've had a psychotic break or mm-hmm. something. I'm not saying like every 50 year old man, blah, blah, blah. But if you're like that age and things you still haven't like figured it out by then like generally there's usually some other reason as to why mm. that might be I find it almost very telling that the landlady was like oh charging me some fees are you well now I'm gonna make my life so much harder by yeah. trying to evict someone who's a problem mm-hmm. it's just like stop cheaping out yeah it, if, if you don't like the fees of a specific estate agent there will be someone to match it or yeah. like slightly undercut it but like you get what you pay you for you do you get what you pay if for you, 100% if you are not in the industry of like such people's background checks following up with references like checking with other landlords blah 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 then like you are running the risk yeah like yeah unfortunately i think this is this is the the bubble that we're currently seeing at the moment is that a lot of landlords are like i'm no longer making a uh, profit on my investment it's like well that's because all investment is a risk yeah you learn this when a bank says to you your capital is at risk you might lose but in not a way, everything I, is up i kind of look at like buying houses and renting all the stuff is almost it almost almost a little bit like cryptocurrency like it, it, is, it, it can it really a gamble. it can Any really change instantly mm-hmm. from like something could happen next door maybe there's like suddenly an a, a, a huge gas thing underneath your mm-hmm. house that explodes or mm-hmm. there's like a leakage that happens down the street that then ruins all the houses going down mm-hmm. and suddenly now your property goes down there is mm-hmm. there is so many risks mm-hmm. so like burping as we're doing when you're doing it but loads of risks involved with um renting houses when i had to live in like a hmo it was only me my partner at the time and two other people we they were fine but we had this one housemate who was really she was very fussy about things in a way that was like actually this is a problem you need to stop doing this like i remember once i just got back from somewhere and she like cornered me in the kitchen and was like the toilet's blocked how dare you and i was like i've just got in like there's absolutely nothing to do with me and she left this passive aggressive note about like well now i have to go to use the hotel bathroom down the road and i was like you could just try and like Mm -hmm. fix part of the house that you live in yeah and i just remember being like this is such a like i'm not interested like it wasn't even that much cheaper to to rent a room in this house than it was to like have uh, our own space so i just remember being like i don't ever want to live in a hmo again because it's just so unpredictable yeah if i had a housemates i need to know them she was so awful anytime something's wrong she'd be like well i'm gonna come around and look to make sure and it's like, okay, you can come around and she'd be like, well, no. <laughs> no. I remember once our heating broke and it was just on all day for two weeks. And she was like, she came around and she was like, oh, it's just, it's just warm. You can probably live with that. God. It's like, oh, are you going to pay for the power then that yeah. it costs to rent to heat this house? It's eventually. She was also doing tax evasion, 100%. Oh, uh, yeah. The, uh, one of my people I used to work with, the Morrison, she shared a house with six people. And it was one of those ones as well, they get rid of the living room and put that in the bedroom yeah. as well so they have a living room. Mm. And the they all had to pay the landlord 
in money. Yeah. And it was like... Tax evasion. Why 100%. are you not putting it in a bank? Like, this is yeah. your, a house, an actual house mm-hmm. rent. Like, that's strange to mm-hmm. me. The idea of lying to random people that you don't know that... I've I've heard many stories from many friends who have had similar situations. Obviously, not this this extreme, mm-hmm. but like many things of like housemates eating other people's food. But because mm-hmm. there's so many of them living in a specific place, it's hard to tell who's doing mm-hmm. it. Items being cleaning smashed and rotors not and all sorts not yeah. being followed. It's just it just seems like a huge recipe for stress. And I mean, I understand that it's like sometimes a budget can't stretch to your own place, especially if you have to go through like actual estate agents with like they they used to have huge fees. I know it's a little bit better now, but I remember like actually to move house it costs so much money. It's yeah. Just like, ugh. Well, it's well, the, the sad thing about it is it's like, it's getting worse. So like these mm. kind of situations are probably going to happen yeah. more and more and more 100%. because of how much money it costs now. I feel no. very lucky that I've not had to experience uh, to deal with that. real intense hatred for like housemates because they're doing awful things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I feel very lucky that I've managed to skip that. And the, the thing is, like actually having awful housemates is typical. To actually have a housemate that you get along with is the rarity. <laughs> yes, of course, yeah. <laughs> that's the thing. So it's, oh, Just like luxurious pussy. So that's it. Time to die. Right. The story is called So That's It, Time to Die. Yes, it's by I Count Fish. Oh. And they say, so I used to live in a really big house, six bedrooms, four bathrooms with a basement all by myself. Where, where, where are all these woman. rich people <laughs> coming from, Jesus? <laughs> I was there as a hiring perk. Oh, I see. So oh, it was okay. like company paid for. And to look after the place for my boss who lived out of the state but owned the home. The first couple of months were fine. But when winter came, I started hearing things coming from the second floor. Mm, I lived pretty much exclusively on the first floor because it was only me. I, it started with little bumps and bangs coming from above where I had my computer set up and progressed to distinct footprints coming across the second oh, floor. Oh, dear. I had been up to the second floor to check up on it from time to time. And I knew there was unfinished areas up there, so I guess it was being like renovated to sell. One place always stuck out, an unfinished room that was sort of like a walk-in closet for one of the upstairs bedrooms. It was attached to the garage attic and completely unlit. It was open when I went up there to investigate the noises, and I'd shut the door and locked it. Two nights later, more noises. Footsteps leading from the unfinished room to the bathroom, and then nothing. And the worst part, the door. The door. The door. The door that led to the unfinished room would not stay closed or locked. I tried everything. Eventually, I pushed the bed up against the door to keep it from opening. That seemed to work. A few months went by without the door being opened, but I would find time to time it would unlock itself. As time passed, I would hear noises all over the house, mostly footsteps, but the occasional thump with no explanation. I cannot explain how horrifying it is to hear little taps up and down the hall from the other side of a bathroom during your morning shower. Oh, God. That's quite awful, yeah. isn't it? When you're, like, all, like, vulnerable. And you're like, no! Well, I think with the house that big, like, someone could quite easily be living that and you'd have absolutely no well, idea. the boy. Do you remember the, the, yeah, the, the boy? Li- yeah, he li- li- lived in the, in the walls. Yeah. God. I eventually moved out, but another employee moved in to take my place. His stay lasted only a month. The story he told me was that he was shaving one morning before work and he had a slam, like someone dropped a heavy stack of books right outside of his bedroom nah. door. That. Yeah, awful. And then heavy footsteps like someone running away. He wouldn't stay in the house anymore and no one in the company will live in that house to this date. Well, what a spooky situation. I, so with these kind of stories when it comes to people living in big houses, right? Two little things that come to my mind. I never understand when people who have money buy places that are so unbelievably large needlessly because... Oh, well, I love it. I love a big house. I don't a big because, silly but, house. But the thing is like, half of that house is just going to be like dust collecting because you can't... Yeah, but if you're wealthy, you have people do with all that. Yeah, but what's you? the point? For fun. You'd be I, like, I want to go into this room and I, just twirl. I will never, I will never... When people win the lottery and they buy these mansions, I'm like, you are going to waste all your money because first of all, the upkeep of a place like that is going to be astronomical. Do you suddenly having money now? Like people who win the lottery, the, most people don't know how to handle money because no, they're suddenly being... No, that is very and true. And they waste all their money. Like that, there was that whole thing of like, the, the richest chav. And then squandered it all on... Drugs and prostitution. Yeah, but he also used to race cars on his front lawn. Race cars on his front lawn. <laughs> but imagine, but like, you hear all these stories a lot of the time where people win the lottery and they buy mm. these like houses that are like 20 bedrooms. It's like... But oh, 20 of... bedrooms is too much. Unless you're running like a, a business or a hotel mm-hmm. or something. Well, this is the thing. Much. So when people... Like six bedrooms... Like for me and my boyfriend and my dog, six bedrooms is the limit. Is... <laughs> <laughs> 
Because <laughs> like when because people buy these houses, like you see like celebrity houses and stuff. Like it's got twelve bedrooms, but 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 there's four of you. Yeah, that is a bit ridiculous. Like what are you doing? Like why do you need that much space? Anyway, enough of that. But so my biggest thing about this is when you buy places that are that large mm. and you there's not many of you there, someone could quite easily break in mm -hmm. and live in a section of that house, and you probably would have no idea. Yeah, I do agree. I Which think... scares me a well, lot. Well, we hear this story actually happen. This yeah. isn't really like a paranormal spooky thing. It's actually a story that has happened that video i think we talked about this last time where someone crawls out of the is it the ceiling the vent ceiling or something vent, and then yeah. goes into the fridge and mm -hmm. they was caught on like a just a home security camera yeah it is quite frightening to think that that could happen but again it's one of those things where like that has happened like home invasion is an actual potential threat especially as as we were just saying the cosy living yeah yeah, yeah. the party body the cosy living the, the party yeah. body like people are going to be like why didn't i just move into my neighbor's mm -hmm. house and not pay rent and die and die yeah and, and haunt them because like this person there was what how many was it five bedrooms six, six, bedrooms. six bedrooms and like she was like well i just basically lived on the first floor because that's all i needed yeah like so you've got all these other rooms everything around you i know you, obviously you're you're there for work you didn't buy this house yeah but like even that i'm like i wouldn't want to go around the house on my own because i it would just the 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 idea of being in this massive empty house not only would it actually be quite lonely mm. but second of all like it's just the aura of being in like a such a huge yeah empty not everyone house, likes just, it it's creepy i remember so my friend i like massive open planned houses though i must admit you know like barn conversions where mm -hmm. they're like this is like a four bedroom but like the living room kitchen diner is like just one huge one room huge. i love that so terrible much. for heating oh prices. i know i know i know, I know, I know. <laughs> that's fully, the real shock fully aware. that's the why <laughs> That's why you don't buy it in England. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, so my my friend, when we when we were really young, we were like when we were like early teenagers. Rachel, her mum used to um, house sit for a woman mm -hmm. where we used to live, and she owned a huge mansion. Mm -hmm. Now and then, we would go in. I would go with them when they would house sit because like like come have fun in the expensive house that you'll never be able yeah. to see in the future because you're poor. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so I mean. it was very that it was like it was very much yeah. like come see what you could never have. Yeah. But we we would sometimes stay in this house. She loved playing hide and seek. Oh yeah, and I hated it really it was so scary walking around this like old house as like an 11 12 year old on my own and like it was an old house as well so it creaked mm -hmm. it was spooky there was like weird old portraits of like dead people on the mm -hmm, walls and mm -hmm. stuff and i was just like i hate it i absolutely hate it but walking around this huge house that's just like never ending corridors it's very blind rooms. manor the black lung blind manor. yeah so like yeah it was like seven or eight bedrooms whatever but also there was also offices and there was also other yeah, rooms that didn't exactly so it, yeah. it was just like I hated it. I hate it. So like, I could never live in such a huge house like that on my own. Mm. If I want like a large place, I'm going to end up like buying or renting one. But as a family, not yeah. just like for me, as much as I would love it, I'm just also a bit like it's, it is a bit wasteful to yes. be like a single person in a massive house unless you've like inherited it or something. Yeah. Well, I always said that we, we said this many times about Jeffree Star buying that like, Bev, what was that? That hill, yeah. Hidden Hills Mount, yeah, Mountain yeah. or something. The McMansion. Just and like, unpleasant. I remember watching the videos of the tours of his house and it was like, all of these rooms are just sitting empty. I like, remember the one thing that I remember from that is when he like put his phone down and forgot which room he put it in and he was like oh three hours later i found stupid, it stupid <laughs> ridiculous like, mm. anyway back to the original no, story yeah. of like hearing these noises and shit i i couldn't do it because i'd be too scared about that i stuff. think it also depends on like the kind of layout and stuff because we've spoken about this before when you, you used to go stay with your friend where um his dad was like at work and then you were like, we hear that. Oh, that's yes. Dead. Yeah, that, that was, yeah, that was yeah. Will's house. So yeah. that's like one of those things. It's, if this is like a large house that's like, I guess a six, a six bedroom houses aren't, unless they're like townhouses, they're not usually like terraced or mm -hmm. like joined on, are they? Because when it comes to like, there was a spooky situation in my terraced house. Sometimes it's just like next door neighbors walking up their stairs, but it's yes, how, that's true. because it's yes. so close, it sounds like they're walking up your stairs. Yes. So yeah, there is that kind of aspect of like, houses make noise and older big houses always make noises mm -hmm. like they're always moving creaking i would quite like one of those ones that's like you know um we quite see them on horror films where they're like super modern but in the hills mm -hmm. but they're like massive houses but they're like all angular and sharp and mm -hmm. part wooden and black and gray and it's like there's fireplaces the thing is like, I, could I could live in something like oh, that uh. but it would just need to be smaller yeah because also i'm so like a studio flat a stu yes a studio <laughs> flat and the hill no it's more for me as well like the upkeep of playing like the amount of money that you'll be spending just to like try yes, to keep a place like that actually going and like put like nice and like well I think kept. the thing of it is is that like because bo we both run businesses from our home I want a place that actually feels like I can have separation of my business and my personal life within yeah. the same home that feels nice because I do not have that separation right now literally I'm just like wake up 
wake up in my office. Yeah. <laughs> That's also very fun. Yeah, that is. Yeah. Like, oh no, why don't I have seven bedrooms for my <laughs> one office? Like, it's a bit ridiculous. I am a fan of old houses. What do you think? Old I houses? Like, I yeah. like, I like, again, I like old houses for like the nostalgia comfort, but I don't think I could live in it. That's mm. all. I think for a little trip with friends to be like, oh, let's sit in this spooky room and tell mm. ghost stories. I'd love a cottage. That. But yeah. like, yeah, actually to live in one, I couldn't. I need it to at least be modern enough that it, it doesn't feel like if I go into another room, the other room You've still died. makes the noise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, it's like yeah. the person is still in there. Yeah, very true. This one is called Kidnapped. Oh. Junior year, I lived with right. two friends. We okay. had two, we had a two bedroom apartment and thus I ended up sharing a room with one of them. Oh, so, oh see, God. Like, no, don't like, Jesus. room sharing is, is so invasive. But that feels very much like hall, like halls, isn't it? Because a but lot of like, you see in like American, like yeah, TV in America, shows, yeah, they have like 100%. sharing their bedrooms. But yeah. I don't think it's common in the UK where you share I rooms with a random legal person. Here. Is it not? I don't think so. I'm not sure. So yeah, anyway, we shared a bedroom. Where was we will call him Jeff. We had a walk-in closet. One night, he and the other roommate, who we will call Eric, went partying while I was off in my uh, off at my girlfriend's place. They came back pretty smashed, and Eric passed out on the couch while Jeff drags himself back into our room and crawls into bed. Oh, a whore! <laughs> <laughs> this would normally be the end of the story, but Jeff had a strange habit in when he got when he got really drunk, he would often sleepwalk. Here we go, another sleepwalking. Uh, he just wants to kiss all the boys. Yeah, he does. Yeah, it wasn't me. No, I was asleep. No. Stop so- it. Sophomore-, Come over here. <laughs> sophomore year, he got tons of shit for waking up in the middle of the night, squeezing past the broken door that barely opened into the closet and literally dousing a joint. The joint in piss. Oh, he would go into the closet oh, and piss. And pee, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. douse it. Why would God. he use dousing? When I think of dousing, I'm like putting like, out a yeah, fire. Li- I think yeah. of like gasoline. Yeah, burnt to death. <laughs> Need to say it began to repeat this process many nights. Now. Jeff reckons he got up in the middle of the night, slept walked into the closet where we shared my Ikea dresser before passing out on the floor. A few hours later, Jeff wakes up to find himself in absolute pitch black room with an un- with unfamiliar objects and no recollection of how he got there. To this day, he claims he was kidnapped. You just woke up off your tits in a, in a uh, you, closet. You woke up in a, yeah, a cupboard. <laughs> Apparently, Jeff, upon realising that he had been kidnapped, jumped up and started to go apeshit in the in attempt to escape. He started banging on the walls and door screaming, Eric! Who was comfortably passed out on the couch okay. and, still, and still a rather heavy sleeper. Now, Jeff was a rugby player and quite built, and so he started to literally tear his way out of the room. God. He punched a hole in one of the walls that led to the bed, led to the bar bathroom and then proceeded to tear tear a torso sized hole in the opposite wall with his bare hands he went through the drywall insulation and another set of drywall on the other side upon reaching the vinyl sliding that aborned the side of our building what's that isn't like a I guess, yeah, insulation or something it's right on the outside so it's like cladding i guess oh okay because he was like trying to break through the literal cl- like like the wall. vinyl oh my god if he had uh had woods uh sidings he would have probably fallen to his death jesus so they were high up then they would have been high up yeah. That, yeah eventually after severely denting the vinyl siding and somehow tearing through my poor dresser to shred <laughs> that got shred in the process of all this Jeff gave up he really needed to pee and began to cry at the state of his hopelessness sitting in defeat on the floor of the closet he saw a light coming from the bathroom door bottom of the door sorry spurred by this he glorious with the glorious light he needed to urinate he finally managed to uh, locate the door handle and stepped out of the room and then here's some pictures of the damage that he did to the closet I'll put them oh on the screen God. so you can see so this is him in the closet trying to break out of the closet. And he didn't realise he was in a closet, I guess. That poor man. Like, oh my God. Yeah, terrifying for everyone. But like, like, he must have felt literally like he had been kidnapped. Yeah, like, I guess it's a bit of a psychotic break as Mixing, well, I guess mixing alcohol with sleepwalking. Because you already don't know what you're doing mm. when you're sleepwalking. If you've got the added on, like if you're... Because re- he, he said that he was really drunk, that he just managed to get into the bedroom. Mm. Your subconscious mind... Is already weird enough when you dream. You think oh, weird 100%. things are happening. Add on alcohol to that. That seems like such a like if you're a it's chronic really sleepwalker, yeah. like mate, you probably shouldn't drink mm. because surely that's like a bad combination. 
Yeah, I, I feel quite sorry for poor Jeff, but I'm also a bit like, mm, maybe don't drink quite so much yeah, if you're, like if if you're you... prone to having a moment. Yes, in the exactly, closet. exactly. Like, poor thing, though, like genuinely thinking that he's been kidnapped and then like trying to rip his way out of the room and then like falling to the floor and urinating. Like, you're, that's quite... Like, Jesus. And but Jeff. I can imagine like him smashing up everything, smashing the wall. Because I imagine... Do you think that would wake people up, though? This person, Eric, <laughs> he's passed you think, out on the uh, sofa downstairs. Oh, on the downstairs. Other, yeah, oh, so well, that's he, far, far enough So away, Eric is in the house, but Eric... So the other guy who's his roommate mm. was at his girlfriend's house. Yeah, that's So right, he wasn't yeah. there. So I guess unless someone on the other side of the building would hear them, I guess mm. it's a difficult one to... Yeah, 100%. If you're someone as well who might be prone to violence or some violent outbursts, alcohol, again, isn't going to be a good... No, unfortunately, sometimes we have to accept that our lot in life is requires specific discipline, should discipline, we say, from yeah. our own minds. So I know, for example, that if I drink, I get very messy. And I know that I don't want to get very messy. So therefore, I don't drink. Yeah. Like, but I, it took me to like, I was like 32 to like actually <laughs> like understand that. So this guy, this is college, isn't it? Which yeah. is what, 18 to 22 in America. So Well, it did say sophomore year. Sof- what's that, that when it is happened. That first? No, that's not freshman, is it? Freshman's the first year. Freshman's the first year. So sophomore, sophomore I guess must maybe be like next, senior. Yeah. Um, maybe sophomore's like the middle. Maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But I, yeah, I don't know these terminologies. They must be at least around 18. 20. Yeah, yeah, 18 yeah. to 20. 18 to 30. 18 to 30. I'm a like, for girl. Vomit. Yeah, I couldn't imagine that. I'm so lucky that I've never had to experience any sort of like violent roommate experiences. But mm. the idea of... Kind and they're of like not just, fun. <laughs> like imagine if he was actually there though and he was having that violent outburst. So that could have been really scared. Like, yeah, but I, I sort of almost think that if this is genuinely the case and he was basically like panicked in a sleepwalking state maybe someone being there could have been like it's fine we haven't given him yet. Mm. but then of course you wouldn't want to run run into someone who's like bent a metal pipe and beating their way out of a building yeah so. trying to like break through the vinyl cladding on the yeah. outside of the wall oh dear well i hope jeff's in a better place <laughs> 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 Do I, that? I she's in dead. a better place now she's dead she's dead she didn't work no <laughs> she was i will put the sound violent. over it though oh there you yeah. go yeah Beep, beep. Again, this is paranormal experiences in your home. Ooh. Ooh. I had the best haunting ever, and I missed my first home because of this. Oh, God. I don't know if I want to. Oh, no. I don't know if I'd be like, I missed it. But let me see it now. Stop depends. jumping the gun. Let yeah, me it. Maybe the ghost comes know. and brings you money. Yeah, maybe. I grew up with a cat named Boots, who was uh, just a year my junior. Boots was motivated only by food. Oh, unrelatable. Um, and spent his later years sleeping on my parents' bed until someone came home. And then he'd jump off the bed. And um, die. With his front and back paws hitting the ground and run to his food bowl to beg. He had to be put down when I was 18. Oh, that's really oh, sad. Dear. My parents moved out of my childhood home during my first year of college. I went back a few times before it was sold. And every time I was certain I felt a cat's presence. Oh, pussy. Yes. <laughs> like, I hesitate to step because I was sure a cat just walked under my legs kind of thing. Upon walking in, I'd always hear a thunk, thunk, like boots jumping down to beg for food. Aww. My mum and I went back uh, for the last day with my family um, to the last day we would ever have in that home. And I told her on the way that I, what I'd experienced. To be surprised, she felt exactly the same. When we walked into the house, we heard thunk, thunk. And Aww. we exchanged shocked glances and confirmed we both heard it. I went and sat in my empty room while my mum got the final things together and while my eyes were closed, I had the force... I had to force myself not to pet a cat that I felt walk up to me because I knew logically it wasn't there. Before leaving, we stood in the hallway in my parents' bedroom, hugged each other and cried, saying bye to my first home. I thought Boots was still around and I suggested we take his spirit to the new one. She agreed and my mum called out, Bootsy, from my parents' room and we heard thunk thunk as if he was getting off the bed we both heard it i don't think he came with us he never liked car rides but i hope the new owners enjoyed their little ghost kitty he was a good boy here is a picture of boots that's, that's very quite sweet. sweet actually taking it all the way back to a nice a story. nice story not murderers no in- not murderers no. no living in the walls i have always said this though that when it comes to like ghost stories the amount of animals and creatures that have like passed on passed away like at what point are we like yes this is a, like do dust mites have ghosts bed bugs from paris the latest trend, <laughs> trend. Do they, yeah do they have um ghosts maybe <laughs> are you haunted by the spirit of bed a bugs? ghost parasite yeah. no but i do think there is something to be said about like missing pets and stuff because even when um biscuit goes to stay with um my boyfriend louis and his mum for whatever reason maybe going out or something i when i wake up in the morning i instinctively think i'm gonna hear his little feet like tapping up 
like around the bed just to be like, wakey, wakey, it's food time. time for baking. I need, to be, I need to eat my pork chop. And it's like, if I don't hear that, I am like, <gasps> spooked. Like, I just feel a little bit like, oh no, something's missing. Oh, no, and I just yeah. walk around my house like, oh, this is really quiet and lifeless. And then like when Biscuit's back, I'm like, yeah. So I do understand the concept of like, oh, nice, yeah, nice little pets. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to be haunted by anything, I'd rather pet. it be a pet. Did you grow up with pets? Uh, so when I was lived with my mum, we had a few pets. But, oh, yeah, that's um, right. Not with not my with grandparents. grandparents. No, no. They, they were like, no. I mean, to be honest, if we had a pet, like, it would have been more of a hassle for them because yeah, of their true. age and things. 100%. We had my I auntie. Know if maybe had like an old cat. <clears throat> no, so my auntie, when towards the end of like me living with them, my, my granddad being alive, she would bring her dog Millie over quite a oh, lot. Right. And Millie would stay with him sometimes during the daytime when she went to work. Mm-hmm. And he, loved it because mm. she would walk him beforehand so mm. and then so she was him. nice and calm yeah, yeah and then he would like look after her through the daytime and she would just kind of like the thing about I, th- I feel like sometimes dogs have a really I mean you can, you can get some terrible ones sometimes but I feel like with dogs they are very good at reading auras of people. oh reading vibes 100%. and my granddad because obviously he wasn't very mobile it was like she knew that and she kind of just like happily sat next to him mm-hmm. and like sort of looked after him. Yeah, it sounds like yeah. a weird no, thing to I say. No, I get you, but I get you. Yeah, she, she, she was never like, but if she saw me, she would suddenly jump up and she'd be like, oh, because I would take her for walks as well. Mm-hmm. Like if she ever wants to go out during the daytime. But as soon as she was with granddad, she knew to like, Calm down, and mm-hmm. she never jumped on him. She was never too like She's just like nice and calm yeah. energy. Yeah. And I think the dogs can do that. I mean, obviously not every dog, but like mm-hmm. I feel like a lot of dogs are like bright enough to pick up on the energy in the room. Yeah. At some point, I'll get something, but at the mm-hmm. moment, especially living here, I don't think yeah. I could cope because yeah. I'm too. I'm very. I'm, I haven't like revealed my plans for the upcoming years yet to the internet. Stay tuned. That, but I'm very excited for the next few mm-hmm. years because I think Biscuit will really enjoy it as well. Um, but when it comes to like childhood pets and stuff, I had quite a variety of pets growing up. Like I had hamsters, rabbits, fish, frogs, dogs, cats. Like oh God. I had a bit of Welcome everything Welcome to really. Pennywell Farm. Literally that. Um, but when they passed away, we would You were like haunted little... by the dead fish. Well, I was never haunted, I don't think, by them. But we would bury them. Um, if they passed away, we would get like little cardboard box or something and bury them like by our big tree in the garden. And I remember that when my dad moved away from that place, I was there was a part of me that was like, oh, like those little graves now like the next family won't know about no them won't know won't them, care yeah. about them apparently now the tree that they were buried near has been removed and it's just kind of like oh it's really different yes of it's course it's like that feeling of i think we've talked about this when we talked about um like going back to go back to where you came from you know when you visit home or whatever <laughs> and it's like the memory of that place is also locked in time it's not yes. just the actual physical place it's like nostalgia is also a time capsule so mm-hmm. like you go back and you're like oh it's not like this anymore so it doesn't feel the same I yeah. feel like that when I go back to oh yeah so now. yeah we went we went back to my old house and I, it felt really strange because it looked so different around mm-hmm. it and everything there was buildings extra buildings and it was like oh this isn't where I grew up yeah a hundred percent it's completely different the same with me in, in Brighton now like there's this place called the Lewis Road and when I was a was child, that the dip it was it was on the way to the dip <laughs> you'd have to go through the dip to get to the Lewis Road there was um, like no big buildings. There was one university campus on one side and like a retail estate on the other. Like it was all very flat. The last time I went back, which was literally, I think it was like last year, two years ago. It was the first time I've been back in like eight years. Huge high rise buildings on both sides of the road. And it made it really like dark. And they had like bridges connecting all these like really? university things. And I was like, oh, this is fully different. Like yeah. completely different to where I grew up. Yeah. So when we go down for our adventure, I'll be like, oh, look. Oh yeah, wigs, 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 and we'll go to the dip. I'll take yeah. you to the dip. Yeah, I'm still waiting for like Sarah to take so me a, a, a tour with, around Brighton. You're gonna be so unimpressed with the dip that we're gonna go into the off license and be like, yes, and see the dip. <laughs> the dip, the dip. You've got to do the motion. The, the dip. dip. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid. If you don't know what the dip is, you've oh. got to go back. What video was it? <laughs> what was it? I don't even know. It was one of, the pod- just it go was back one of us. Like, was it like first jobs or something? Maybe. Like, it was like, where did you grow up? But yeah. Are you okay? <laughs> the dip. <laughs> the dip. The dip. The dip. The dip. No. Yeah, we'll the dip. Wasn't it? It was, it was horrible. It was, pe- it, was, was it? it was our first Halloween what month was because really? you, were, you were talking about um, the graveyard thing with that man or something. Oh, you were yeah. like, I was by the dip. The dip. I was actually <laughs> going to mention that story again. So oh, I'm right, glad right. you reminded me because I was like, that was also the same night. I think it was that night that I saw like a badger and I was oh, like oh yeah, it's no, a badger that, it, yeah, and they're yeah. really big yeah <laughs> there's no title for this one a we'll woman. call it The Sheltered Roommate okay. a very sheltered roommate I had living downstairs was very open about her singing she had no shame and talent to match. <laughs> oh, there you go. Awful. <laughs> Singing Share Believe was one of her Saturday morning go-tos it could be worse right? <laughs> 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 
Well, maybe it could be worse. 5 a.m. is just too early for Cher. But what was most disturbing was her Backstreet Boys rendition of I Want It That Way. This is when things get odd. Maybe she was just trolling me, but she would belt out the tune when she got ready to go to bed and after one of her evening shifts. Right. The odd thing was, it was how long she would be singing for. There was still singing constantly over and over throughout the night. I went downstairs to ask her to wait until the morning, but it was dark. No mm-hmm. lights at all. Even in her room, it was pitch black. 4 a.m. And she's singing in her heart out in bed. So I knock <laughs> on the door and the singing stops. She, she opens the door all confused and she's barely and she barely has any voice left. The next morning I apologize for surprising her but I couldn't sleep with all of her backstreet boys singing. She doesn't understand what I'm talking about <laughs> but suddenly occurs to me that she was singing in her sleep <laughs> every night. So That's how be like crazy lady backstreet boys so how could i expect her to just not sing in her sleep maybe she was trolling me but for eight months she had gag yeah she did a whole (laughs) gag every night but for eight months she sung her heart out every single night what lovely oh that's nice imagine everyone needs a hobby every single night she's like she wakes up and her voice is like hello do you believe she she goes to like the doctors and being like i don't know why my voice is always so strange yeah back in the day this would have been demonic possession demonic but oh that would have been oh you've got the singing demon of devon oh god here it's in this tome oh well sex demon why Cher and backstreet boys i don't know did did these songs come out at like a similar time or something and maybe like the brain they're both 90s so maybe the subconscious brain is like i was safe in the 90s do you remember back streets back that's not that's not the right song does it not no what was the song then i want it that way not back streets back you are my (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> beautiful oh no maybe you th- were that woman i am that woman and mm. i transitioned oh, shaved on my hair off and yeah. i'm a boy you should uh, probably change back i should yeah <laughs> <laughs> god i can't imagine having like just you just need to just hear singing throughout the night and you're like yeah. what well, that king bitch be quiet actually so one of these things about like noises overnight is quite funny because um my boyfriend now he doesn't snore as such oh, but gosh. he makes like interesting noises so once i'm probably gonna share tea here spilt tea sorry louis um Dead once now. i came once i was like i was just awake for some reason and he was asleep but he was like sleeping with little like t-rex arms and he was going wee, wee, and it was oh, so my God. funny but when i i was kind of like half asleep and i was like what is that noise? what, what is that <laughs> is i didn't realize it was him at first and then i started recording and i was like oh my God, so I recorded it and showed him the next day. He thinks it's hilarious. And I was like, he hasn't done it since. But I was just like, that's so funny. Because I've never heard just someone be like, because he's like really big and muscly as well. And just see him like this going, Wee! was really, oh, <laughs> really He's a secret sissy in his oh, dreams. no, I'm oh. sick of them. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been the person that like talks in my sleep. Have I talked... When, you have a few times and we, when you have a few times but it's never been anything that's like Legible. weird or creepy it's kind of just a few grunts or something and mm. then you would go back to sleep mm. i remember when i was really really little my mum would i was a really big sleep talker when i was little and my mum would often say like tell me what i was talking about in the morning and this is no reason for my mum to like exaggerate or lie but i used to have a thing about moths and i still do oh. I'm, I'm quite i quite like I had a moth. moth and yes it scared the oh, shit out of me it? It just appeared, and i was yeah. like <laughs> i love moths but i was i would like blabber on about moths in my sleep so god Clearly, an ADHD child. Moth <laughs> undiagnosed, woman. yeah. Is it spooky to hit? I guess singing is quite frightening, isn't it? At least she wasn't like giggling. I think finding out that, like, I think maybe the discovery of what's going on is creepy. Like, going down, you just hear someone singing the heart. It's the out, mystery. And isn't then it? suddenly being like, why is it so dark down here? Why are they singing in the dark? And then, like, they're like, what are you talking about? I've not sung. Yeah. Like, that's creepy. Yeah, to be like, what's wrong with you? Like, either accusing you're to, me. Yes, yeah, like either either you're trying to gaslight me it's, or like... I, any which way it sounds like an, an accusation. Yeah. It's like, you, stop with your share belief. It's like, I'm not singing. And they'd be I'm like, not, hang on a second, hang what's on, happening? No. In that situation, I would be like, right, we have to record because yeah. this is ridiculous. But didn't she also say like, when she got back from work... Yeah, it was when just singing she, all the time. Yeah, so 
Was she just sleeping all the time? Yeah, she's constantly sleeping. Just off sleep- her tits. Yeah, off her tits. Mm. Yeah, DMT. DMT. Do you remember when we were on your old balcony and we saw Samara uh, walking back? Oh, we saw Samara, yeah, walking back. And she was doing it for hours. We, and it was so like 2 a.m. It was during the massive heat wave we had a few years ago. It was mm. maybe three years ago. And it was like one of the, it was like the hottest we had on record. Like, mm. Callum was ill, like, Sarah was ill because mm. it was so hot. I felt like death. Mm. And we, 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 yeah, because you came over to film mm. and we were like, we cannot film. We can't it film. Is so day. hot it's too, way too hot so we spent most of the evening sort of sitting out on the balcony because it was the only place that we have at least somewhat coolness mm-hmm. and we just looked we were just looking around because we where the where we lived before the balcony kind of looked over a lot of other apartments so we'd be able to kind of see everyone and so we we're just looking around and there was this woman in one of the apartments like standing by her window in the front room like just Walking backwards and forwards, but not not just like walking, but like it was almost like a ghostly stroll. Yeah, it was very like softly walk this way, it and was, then like turn around softly. And walk she back. was doing it for hours, hours and not stopping. Hours. It wasn't like it was just like oh she did for the because some of the I pace when I'm doing yeah, when sending I'm voice notes or something. Or something. Yeah. but it was like an uncomfortable amount of time, and it was really weird. And we it was kept like, looking over and being like, oh, "Is that it again?" I was just still there, <laughs> going. Still there. Crazy. Yeah. It was very weird. I was like, well, "I don't know what was going on in that house," but like, yeah. you can count me out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was like just a late night stroll around the house. Mm, but odd. Maybe she odd. was sleepwalking. Maybe she was. Mm. Maybe she was dead. Maybe she was dead. Yeah. Oh, it was. Samara coming back from the well goes, Mummy! The well girls! Okay, so we have another haunted house situation. Okay. <laughs> My uncle's house is out on a very eastern part of New York and was said to be haunted due to the family that used to own it in the 1800s. Delicious. So this is one thing that I feel like is very different between the UK and the US. I think we've said this before. Mm-hmm. Like 1800s in the US is a really old place. Yeah. Here we're like, oh, we've got loads of them. They're yeah, exactly. Like the yeah. oldest place in the UK is from like 900. Yeah. Like, and it's like a pub and it still works. I like, hate, no, that actually, that scares me as well. To think of like, to actually like think of, People living a life in the UK, like in London, or whatever, in like, I so I think one thousand and two. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, so oh, I I, I think the fact that it's like a pub is almost more freaky because the amount of lives that would have been involved in that is infinitely more than like if it was just someone's house. Yes, true. So true, like loads true. of people would have come through and come out, and there would have been chefs with food and story shared and drinking for like. A thousand years. Yeah, well, I like hate that. It. The eighteen hundreds and decided not to give it to the stableman and sold it instead. He and the maid were said to have haunted the place. Oh, I see. The family in the eighteen hundreds had a maid and they, they apparently they haunted the place. We always used to joke that we would hear people or things moving around at night, but since the house is so old, we just used to laugh it off. Ha <laughs> ha uh, what a funny old maid. Yeah. My uncle's friend had her and her sister stay over for the house one night and the friend noticed a maid bringing towels downstairs when she woke up. God. She saw the maid again bringing what looked like a percolator. (coughs) Percolating in the park. She's percolating her pussy. (laughs) Down the stairs. She was so impressed by my uncle's hiring staff. He is a neurologist in New York City. So he had a bit of a spending, a bit. he had a habit of spending a bit extra. She went back to bed and she woke up later and then went downstairs to see my uncle and his friend just chatting. She asked asked where the maid went and she thought that the maid was cooking breakfast. My uncle said he had no idea what she was talking about and asked her what she looked like. My sister explained and he laughed. He walked her to the living room and pointed at an old picture and she said that was the woman she saw. My uncle responded with, yeah, she's been dead for about a hundred years. Oh, stop it. Oh, Oh, I hate it. So, yes, it is interesting, I think, that sometimes this happens in older places like families and stuff. For some reason, it seems to happen a lot, not really with families of these older places, but with, like, the staff. Yes. Like, uh, there was a lady and she used to bring the eggs. She haunted she egg had lady. The eggs, yeah. It's interesting when you think of, like, how many places in the UK, especially the UK, where, like, there used to be one massive house that a huge family would oh, have for yeah. 100 years but then converted into like many different apartments and you mm-hmm. hear stories of being like oh there was a, a woman who was like a maid or a child and they would run through the wall where like mm-hmm. the original corridor would be mm-hmm. and things like that so yeah. yeah you hear a lot of stories like this there could be many explanations and like sh- maybe she's she subconsciously well, I, yeah, like one of those the- things where if you've just woken up like I don't trust my eyes my ears or my face when yeah. like, I've just woken up have you ever like had like someone stay over or whatever and you they've woken you up by like asking you questions and mm-hmm. you're like don't Talk what? to me. What are you talking about? I find when I first wake up, I'm really sensitive, and so I stupid. This is. I mean, this is totally. This is totally my fault. So. 
there have been occasions where like I'm watching something on the TV like because we watch a lot of like dark yeah. media yeah. and sometimes I've fallen asleep and then I wake up uh-huh. and then I see what's ever going on on the screen and I hear like a something spooky and then it really scares me because mm. like in that midst of waking up it's really freaking me out oh you are one of the jumpiest people oh, I've I hate ever it. met as well but one thing that happened really recently was I was listening so when I go to bed I never have silence I always have something on mm. so I was listening to Silent Hill music why and would you I do know that I going know. to oh my god so you might as well I like to hear to a lovely woman screaming <laughs> but like it's like ambient kind of like soundtrack it's not actually like people shooting or being no zombies. but it's like it's like <laughs> haunting and music like, I know and like, I've listened to it a few times I like it throughout the process of doing it I obviously hadn't really listened to the full thing no and this one night I must have been playing it just a little bit too loud and towards the end of this soundtrack it goes really violent and you just suddenly hear it screaming and shouting of people like dying in like zombie oh, stuff God. and like I don't know why they put this at the end of this playlist because the whole other I mean maybe there's bits I didn't wake up beforehand yeah. but throughout this whole process of listening to this I've never heard this and I woke up to the sound of like screaming and it uh, scared the living <laughs> shit out of me oh, to the stage where I didn't sleep basically for the rest of that night even though like when I realised what was going on I was like oh it's just my phone the music has mm. somehow got this horrifying like sound at the Mm -hmm. end of the playlist Mm -hmm. i just couldn't sleep yeah and it's something about that waking up my i get so sensitive and like if you do something in that like few minutes of before i've properly adjusted to oh i'm alive now Mm. you can really fuck me up yeah and i don't your adrenaline must spike so hard you're like well no bed for me so like i can imagine if i was in a place like that i might be half asleep going down the stairs and maybe subconsciously we were talking about the maid yeah or i've seen the photo photo, and i haven't processed it properly but in the subconscious that photo is in my mind Mm -hmm. and then i've seen that thing and gone oh, mm. I'm going back to bed now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then that could... Because like, I'm sure I'm not the only one who has this like, hypersensitivity when I first wake up. Mm-hmm. So... Oh, no, I've got... Well, I, I literally said it earlier. For some reason, I always seem to hallucinate like house intruders. Yeah. So I've got this bookshelf that sits in the corner. And on top of it, I've got a little bat that was a gift um, to me for like Christmas last year from my boyfriend's mum. And um, it's just a cute little bat. Every now and then, if I'm like half asleep, I look over and it looks like a person standing over my bed. And I am like, <gasps> panic. Sleep paralysis, but then I'm demon. All, yeah, and then I'm like, obviously that's just my bat. So I'm mm-hmm. absolutely fine. But that sensitivity of just waking up is a real thing. I'm sure loads of people have like things to share in the comments here. Because we see it quite often on like TikTok and stuff, especially if you've had like a bit to drink or something. Oh, yeah. Do you remember that vine of that woman where someone like goes to give her water and it goes on her face and she just wakes up and goes, hello. hello. <laughs> it's like, what is she thinking? Like if she, if she could explain what she hello. was, she was like, I was woken and a woman asked me a question, but she spat in my face. Yeah. And I was like, hello, hello, <laughs> hello. God. And it's so, but that happens so often. And it's so funny to think of like, you're like, you're who you are is not there at that moment. Oh, like, absolutely, whoever yeah. you are, whoever Roly is was not there when that, mm-hmm. that sound was like, she's going to die screaming. Like you were, you were somewhere else. I you told Callum, and he was just laughing at me because he was like, why the f*** were you listening to Silent Hill music? I will play it for you after this. I'll play you what the actual normal sound is that I was listening to. I don't know if I want to hear it. No, no, because it's just like ambient noise. And Mm. I'll I'll play it for you after this. But yeah, I'm sensitive when I wake up. So I'm not surprised that sometimes you would see this because I heard Will and his dad say similar things when he lived in his house because it was one of those houses again that was from like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds Uh of years ago uh, and especially if you wake up early as well like I hallucinate in the dark all the time Mm -hmm. like if it's really dark and you're trying to like focus in on something like a point in the room or something if you're already a little bit sleepy your brain can be like that's the face yeah she's gonna get you paradolia darling paradolia it's very the babadook well they they say that about bloody mary they say that about bloody mary is that what it is? So when you and have a can- when you have a candle and you sit and you look into a mirror oh, in yes, like the darkness course, yes. and you say Bloody Mary, it's like people say that the reason you sometimes hallucinate a woman behind you is because your brain is trying to make sense of what it's looking at because oh, it's yeah. so dark. Well, that's why we have pareidolia yeah. is because our brain is used to seeing patterns and like wants us to see things. Yeah. This is called nibbles in the night. Oh, <laughs> biscuit. My then girlfriend and I were getting eaten at night by something for months. Mariah, we'll call her, says... Mariah Carey. <laughs> Nibbled by Mariah. Frantically itching his arms, but could never find a trace of bed bugs anywhere in our room. Oh, My friend Paris. wasn't getting bitten at all. After months, I had everyone search the apartment. Turns out my friend's room was like a bed bug... What does that say? 
Condominium. Condom. What does oh, that mean? Is it like, like loads of them living all in one place? Oh god! But he wasn't Awful. being affected by the bites. The bugs were seemingly coming into our room at night, eating the shit out of us, and then <laughs> commuting back into his room to hide. Probably because he never cleaned it or washed his sheets. Oh, if you get bed bugs though, like you have to throw the whole house mm-hmm. away. I kind of forgot how horrible that period of my life oh, was. So I've blocked it out of my memory. The day I broke down. I made everyone tear everything apart. My friend went into his room for like two min- two minutes and came back holding a bug in his hands. He went back into his room and I just heard, oh no, oh no, oh God, he found so many more. I'm sorry, like I- This is very on topic for what's is, currently happening oh, in, in Europe. In, yeah. in France. Can we just please, please, if you live in a house share, like I know you can't police what everyone's doing, but like- Try to know that your housemates are at least having some level of hygiene where yeah, they, they're not know, like right. not washing their sheets for months mm. and months on end. Obviously in this apartment, it's quite small. So like if Callum did anything really disgusting, I would very easily be able to smell it. Yeah. So I can understand maybe if you live in like a huge house, the top floor, you might not be able to smell it as much if you're down the bottom. I would be, I, I would need to know that the people I'm living with have some level of hygiene where yeah, like, I'm 100%. not going to accidentally have like an illness because they've got rotten things that might... I might smell well, the pores, the spores is, yeah, I, th- or I something. think this is very important to notice is that like, I know that some people are going to say like, well, it's difficult to like sometimes manage your life. That's absolutely fine. But as soon as my health is put at risk yeah. from somebody else being negligent, then there's a huge problem yeah. there. So the black mold rising damp and the lung or whatever, mm-hmm. like bed bugs is a serious thing as well. Yeah. Because you have to like, you have to like fumigate your clothes, mm-hmm. your carpets, your rugs, your bed, your curtains, everything. Yeah. Oh, I hate Awful. it. I hate it. I hate it. I am it. a bit like nervous about like what's currently happening. Yeah, because in France there's a big outbreak and now there they're like... Is. There was also this thing, I don't know how true this is, but I was reading on X that, um, <laughs> I know, stupid, on Twitter, that um, it was started by this person on 4chan who wanted to like bring down the Western governments. He was he started like selectively breeding um, bed bugs to make them like selectively li- breeding know, bed know, bugs. What in the fucking there was no like proof, but it was like posted in like twenty like the middle of twenty twenty two, and it's like if that was the case, and they were breeding things that could be like you know very highly highly breedable and selectable and can like live for what breed time. me daddy very that i'm just a bit like oh just imagine Jesus. i wouldn't put it past some people though to just be like do you know what fuck everybody else oh absolutely yeah there's always going to be weirdos who do that kind of stuff and if you've spent like i i don't actually go on 4chan practically ever unless it's in I one of our ever weird been in 4chan. unless it's in one of our weird things where we're like we see the green text screenshots from yes, from yes, it yes, yeah. um or it's to do with like lol cow or something i don't really go on it or have any experience with it some of the people on there are so like far down the rabbit hole of like society hates me so i'm going to become a problem for everyone oh yeah and it's like these people are unsavable i I, I absolutely yeah unsavable i do not like put it past them at all that this is like some sort of experiment gone wrong or experiment gone right for example oh i hate it yeah i'm not looking forward to the idea that there's like an actual like serious level of outbreak happening mm-hmm. and they're all like people don't fumigate bus seats yeah they what? don't fumigate train seats have you seen like our infrastructure in the uk is really really bad when it comes to public services like i don't know if you've ever been on a train when it hits like the terminus and then you see the cleaner come on and they just kind of like pick up a piece of rubbish well because like, they that's it the thing is they haven't got they, hoovers they, they haven't got anything because they're so underpaid yeah and, and, and they don't have time as well yeah, to do it they, they just do don't have, have time. time to fully clean everything even during like um the pandemic that's, that's happened happening they put out this statement to be like we're pumping more fresh air into our trains it's like you haven't done anything you haven't modified the trains you're not doing anything here i feel as much as like i do love london everything one thing i will say is like the london underground feels very outdated it's so disgusting like some of the trains they don't fit with modern life and especially with population like there are some things like the elizabeth line which is a brand new line the trains are big they're air cons they're massive and like those are actually nice, but the majority of our like train lines in the underground now is not fit for modern society. It's not. And like the amount of times now, but even just from the distance, like from when I first moved to London in 2015 to now, there has been such a huge difference because a lot of that time I was working in retail and mm-hmm. a normal job, mm-hmm. so I would commute in the mornings. Mm-hmm. And the progression of like intensity of how many people were there, yeah, even just in the you know the 10 years I've lived in London nearly now, like. 
has like tripled. Yeah, like oh, 100%. And, and and for modern society, modern ways now, and it's only getting more and more jam packed because like it's more- getting worse and worse. A lot of it is due to the austerity that the Tory government has brought in over the what 13, 14 years that they've been in and power. And they're like, oh, we needed change. Yeah, yeah, from because, you. So that yeah, exactly. Like you've been in power. So I can't believe the they're still saying that slogan of like, oh, we need to do things differently. We need the change like, is what we really need. Yeah. Like you've done everything that you're saying. You need to change. But what it is, is that it's the case of like every major city that isn't London in the UK has fallen behind in terms of like development, in terms of um, job opportunities, in terms of infrastructure, so that if people want to like have money or have a, a decent quality of life in the UK, they're going to start looking for jobs in London mm-hmm. and therefore people just flock to London. So because the rest of the country has been forgotten, there's more people moving to London, more people migrating to London, if that's from foreign lands or from our own lands, mm-hmm. and none of the infrastructure has been upgraded to deal with this no. we've just seen this with hs2 yeah he's just decided to be like no Bye, actually. sorry no and more. then that pissing transport minister was like oh no well we weren't actually going to do that these were just illustrative ideas of projects that we might do in the future it's like no uh, 36 billion pounds got that's the true spook yeah the true spook of october this year is that our government has sold us all down the river yeah and pocketed all their money. Disgusting. That's the, ri- the thing is, he's closed the doors behind him by actually selling off the land or putting the land up for sale that HS2 was meant to occupy. Has not has not just said we're going to pause this project. It said, oh no, we've put it, we've gotten rid of it. No, nope. yeah, and it's like that's disgusting. And I think I the that. thing is, like, we always talk about why is Rishi Sunak wanting to be prime minister and everything. The only reason he wants to be prime minister is because he wants power, but also mm-hmm. it's so he can control how much tax he has to pay himself. Oh, a hundred. It's all. It, he's not actually in power because he cares about the country. Or whatever. No, so he, he's a he, billionaire. It's his huge tax. Um, yeah. A huge tax scam. Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. This is by Belis Bell, and it's uh, what is the creepiest or most paranormal thing that's ever happened to oh, you? Oh, my mum. Yes. I was about 17 and I was in my bedroom crying my eyes out over something. Home could be difficult at times and that evening I was really upset. I needed someone to talk to but the only phone in the house was downstairs where my parents were so calling a friend wasn't an option. Oh my God, so that's very like... It's not recent because that's mm-hmm. mobile. So yeah. Do you remember the landline? Oh, Being the like, land. You can't use no. it. Uh, if you call someone after six, it's cheaper. Yeah. Oh, dial back. Yeah. Oh, my God. Reverse charge yeah. call. I'm lost. I'm help. lost. Help. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do and how to deal with the crap I was going through and I was trying to live with that I really felt I couldn't go on for much longer. I remember thinking, please, someone help me. Not a prayer as much as a manifestation and hoping that if screaming into the void would help in some way or another. There was definitely no one in the room with me and I had my back to a chest of drawers, obviously on the floor. I think very upset. It's like Berners watch as the timekeeper comes. We have this watch. Help, here you go. And then I felt something on my left shoulder as if someone was standing behind me resting their hand on me I could feel the weight of each individual finger and the palm cupping my shoulder and I could feel warmth from it it didn't scare me but it was enough to stop me from crying I guess the feeling lasted for a minute or so and then it just stopped I have no idea what it was but it was enough to calm me and I wish I could feel it again oh wow what what that was Uh, hallucination it could have just been like the your warm embrace of death the war- <laughs> it was <laughs> satan mm. uh like i i, I you know, the mind is a, a powerful thing it is and like that that's could why have, we have things like the placebo effect yeah in, med- in medicine <laughs> that could have been something like oh maybe because you will you've almost like willed your brain to kind of do it to yourself 100%. to calm yourself down mm-hmm. like you're the fact that like sometimes when you're like unwell or you're trying to like uh so you're in a situation of like you're trapped on a boat somewhere and you need to survive mm. like your your brain <laughs> your brain is very clever where like it can shut down certain parts of the body to preserve other parts of the body yeah. but you're not doing that your yeah. brain is just doing that well, like, your, your brain has had millions of years of yeah. evolution of wanting to survive so, so yeah it's very important your brain can do things to your body that's completely out of your control in order to save your life mm-hmm. so maybe Maybe your neurons in your brain somehow was like, this is a really stressful situation. I can help. Yeah. Maybe if I did this, it will calm her down. Mm. I don't know. I also think that crying is actually a really powerful tool that humans have evolved. Mm -hmm. And I find it quite almost depressing in a way that like, most typical boys or typical men growing up are told like, ah, oh, crying's for sissies. Well, I'll give you something to cry about, <laughs> which makes it worse. Crying is a pressure relief system in the oh, body. Yeah. Like when you get so 
stressed that you end up like actually having moment to yourself and just being like, I don't know what to do. And you just like break down in tears. You actually end up feeling slightly euphoric afterwards mm-hmm. because your brain is like, oh, that pressure valve is released. Yeah. Like yeah. we can we can now focus on other things. So it's so like, have you ever been in a situation where you're like trying to stop yourself from crying? Mm-hmm. It is the worst it was horrible. Isn't it? It's horrible. It's experience. Yeah. And you get that like uh, uh, feeling and it's just so awful. But yeah. if you actually manage to like let yourself have a moment, feel the emotion emotions let yourself be a human being and have those feelings quite often your brain is then like oh i'm so glad we did that yeah so maybe that was a case of like well that's why you see so many there's so many things of like uh especially men mm. suddenly have these humongous breakdowns it's mm-hmm. because they've never actually tried to like let it out for mm-hmm. so long mm-hmm. that it eventually explodes you can never actually hide your true you can't you, hide them forever no you can no. only hide it for a certain amount of time and your body eventually it's like it's the same thing as like if you try to stop yourself from sleeping, eventually yeah. your body will go, fuck no, you, yeah. and will make you this sl- is sleep. Yeah. So, like, it's the same with, like, emotions and trying to, like, your own crying. Mm-hmm. Like, if you put that in too much, you end up with, like, so many issues, and your mm-hmm. body eventually will just it's so break bad down. For your, yeah, it's so bad for your mental health as well, because if you end up developing, like, bad coping mechanisms to stress, i.e. the wonderful thing that the patriarchy has done, which is rebranding anger as not an emotion, <laughs> which is just like, okay, so if you are really stressed and you just react with anger instead of being able to, like, have a moment, maybe let your body experience these emotions and then clear your mind to allow you to actively like tackle a problem. You are never going to be able to actively tackle a problem unless it literally is save my life in this fight. Absolutely. With anger. Like yeah. being, a ma- like no, like anger quite often makes a situation a lot worse and it yeah. will, might quite often make you say things or do things that you would never usually say or do. Mm-hmm. I think sometimes like with these kind of stories, it's like there was no description in that of like, what was happening what was happening yeah. or you know maybe her, like someone had died in the family or mm-hmm. someone died in the home there was no description of like the house so going on that i wouldn't necessarily say paranormal to me that sounds of your it's like it a sounds brain, quite human yeah, actually it sounds like a brain coping mechanism where like it's you needed a level of reassurance and your brain's gone uh-huh. yeah and you've gone oh that's better. oh thank you oh, thank you that's nice but yeah so the moral of the story is cry more <laughs> cry more sob I want to ask you everyone in the comment section now you just, just sit treat yourself cry. to a little cry yeah <laughs> Jesus Christ Jesus I might Christ treat myself later yeah shall we yeah, should just sit in my we'll car and go ah, ah my life's so shit uh, well, I've got gout gout um Anyway. Yes. Well, happy spook. Happy spook. Spooktober. I hope. So this is coming out a couple of weeks before. Like I'm, I'm putting this up on Monday, uh, Sunday. So yeah. this will be. Yeah, my Halloween one's coming out on Thursday. And yeah. it's like October 10th. It's October, <laughs> yeah, I tried to get this closer. But I feel like with this stuff, it's almost like it's, it's, it's kind seasonal. of like. It's seasonal. It's a. Uh, but people will still watch us out after Halloween. Yeah, anyway. that's true. I think if people I was like to literally spook. brand it as like Halloween, Halloween only, Halloween, yeah, Halloween, yeah, yeah, then I wish I wish Halloween was more of a. If I ever do like Halloween themed stuff, I never like to brand as Halloween because it tends to never get views afterwards. But if you yeah. brand things that are, n- yeah, it's not content. It's not evergreen content. Yeah, which yeah. is quite frustrating for jobs like this. But. Mm-hmm. Um, Thank you for watching, listening. If you are yes. here, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. As always, and share say, us some paranormal, uh, like housemate haunted house stories. Yeah, but it doesn't have. If you just share, if you have a paranormal story, just share it. You don't yeah, have to, share it, it. It doesn't have to be my housemate came and ate my bacon, and then like, she died, and then she died on the bacon strip, and it was uh, like karma, bitch. Oh. And it turns out you actually poisoned her, uh, and um, I cried, and then, and then cried for eight years. Oh, sobbing. A beautiful AI story by <laughs> ChatGPT. <laughs> Oh, very good. Please hit the like button. Yes. Subscribe. Yes. Obviously, go check out Luxury's channel down below. Yes, please. And if you do listen to us audio, as I said, me, please give us a nice review, some thumbs up, five stars, whatever it is you're listening on. Um, send us a nice review. Yeah. Send us money. Yeah. Buy a carrier pigeon. <laughs> buy a please. carrier pigeon. Send us checks in the mail. Yes. One cent. Where we can't cash them. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, thank you for watching, and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye, guys.